welcome to the Pirate King Plays Final Fantasy 16. The last we left our heroes, um, Ultima cast Primogenesis, shrouding the whole world. It seems, at least for the time. Um, so yeah, it's continually overcast, and there are ether floods going on all over the place, and waves of Akashic attacking us. So we went to our the three locations of our alliance and uh, cleaned up some messes for them. But now we're back here. What we're gonna do next? Was wondering when you turn up. Hello, small our friends, thanking you for your timely intervention. How is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment? Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Maybe my life is written. Hmm, some... Let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystals. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. So... Right. Clive, we knew this was gonna happen. Well, not the bleeding skies part. But you take my ah. point. Now's not the time to second guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Taya says your brother's awake. Oh shit. Thank you, Otto. Let's go talk to Joshua when, you know, we're not in the middle of a huge battle. So it was not Sylvester, but Olivier who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. Got only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. Joshua. What do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid. Despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? You're rather unique. That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. Yes. But you, Clive. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Ah, uh, he's tried. Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. 
but I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. It is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. I'm sorry. Inside you? Yep. With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Joshua! <coughs> Clive! It's Gav! <coughs> There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canver. Oh wait, are we going to Canver? Cool. I figured we would eventually, but it's not an overworld. Well, what's the short of it? Uh, it's all tired, told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No, but they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. <laughs> and we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. Tell Gav to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian, what's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Yeah, yeah another map. This road, <laughs> Maybe through Tabor, not. should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. What are you Joshua, doing up? Bed is where you should be bound. Right? You don't think I told him the exact same thing? <laughs> Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But, thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separated. Oh. All right, we travel together. Okay, then. Clive. If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you. Brother. I'll look after him. And we got side quests. We're doing those first, of course, but, uh... Jill, are you coming along, or is it just the brothers? No, it's all of us! It's all four of us. Excellent. My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. <clears throat> she would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. Taya's right. Your brother is in no condition to travel. That's all I'll say on the matter. It's Mid, Gav, and your uncle we should be thinking about now. What will it be today? Huh. It's not merely the men and women of Alistair who have been affected by the imbalance of nature. These blackened skies cast a pall over the creatures of the land. And how could it not? They are living beings, just as we are. Alas, their instinct drives them to flee from that which cannot be escaped. They show no one but man to know. But are we any better? We consider ourselves above, above such beings. And yet fear and bewilderment drive us to make war on our fellow man, to turn our ire and our own suffering upon those whose suffering is not to be seen. If that, it was, if that is what it means to a human, then I can wonder if we are even worth saving at all. I cannot claim. You must have been shocked to learn of Spinside's destruction. Indeed, I have long known that such a fate was all but plain indeed. A piece of parchment was all that ever stood between the dominion those who signed the treaty were only going to abide by it for as long as it suited them. Emperor Sylvester's invasion saw it torn to shreds at last. Now, we can scatter to the winds. 
long festering enmity from the whole world. Such are the wages. If those in power pay heed to their whispers, they are like to grow into a mighty storm, one which the walls of even the stoutest citadel might not withstand. Ironic, then. That it should be Prince Dion, the boldest, most trustworthy player in these noble lands, who should be the finisher of all. How may I help you today? Study it well, Clive. Tabor is our next destination, on the way to the free city. Very good. As for side quests, ah, one of them is a mystic. And then, uh, or at least one is a mystic. I don't know how many. Uh, and then three others. Oh dear. Remember, I'll do everything I can for, but until it goes out of here. So it looks like we have more. One more. Attack. I see. South of Tabor down that way. That's why it popped up so far over here. We can probably take these guys. But I don't want to try the S rank. Did you see that? Tell me you saw that. Start. There's a storm coming, Sid. Will there be thunder? Sid, perhaps you can help me solve a mystery. Sure. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales, the ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere to play, but when I asked, they swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them. As always. Wait. You mean the twins who are right here? Oh. We have to... Well, on our way there, we'll grab whatever else we need. It seems the hideaway is oh, lost its blasted book. Can you play? Oh, yeah. Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. <laughs> what? I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing. Thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan's stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing, and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone! <laughs> so if you don't want to be seen as playing favourites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favorites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, what's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. Huh? That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a T. Only, turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Ivan said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Who's to say the ingredients even exist anymore? Well, 
That's a question for a scholar, wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? All right. A kindly old fella who haunts the shelves, maybe? Oh, tell me. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. That one's nearby, so let's go. Well... Hippocrates. Norseman Harpocrates. I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valicia, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. Why we're here? That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. Ah. So the fabled San Briquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. What is it, though? Now, <laughs> Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the Wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers. Hmm. Uh, how very San Briquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. Uh. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet, in contemporary parlance, a herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add that people once believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life, in which regard fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. <laughs> okay. Deal with that when we leave. Ready to leave. I'll go to my missives first, see what those are about. Then we'll head over here, eye for an eye. And then up here, on balance. Though there may be something in between. Who knows where things will take me? It seems the hideaway is lost its. Did you see the pair that got pulled into time? Just a humble request. Master Clive, I apologize for this sudden and untoward gesture. Circumstances have forced me to seek immediate aid. There is none other to whom I may turn. Your most esteemed Lord Uncle has presented me with a task most vexing. Fear I am wholly unable to perform to his vaulted expectations, namely due to a marked lack of martial aptitude on my part. To wit, I am but a manservant, not a mercenary. While I maintain the fitness ample to attend to the needs of a manor, to the attending of bandits in back alleys, I am sorely ill-equipped. If it please, my lord, prithee come to see me at Martha's rest when I shall pro uh, proceed to explain my predicament in full. Sebastian Rutherford, Sen Seneschal to Lord Byron Lewis. Rutherford. Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? You did just well, say that to Martha's me. rest. I just prioritize whatever pops up. Grabbing the others, I'm sure, on the way. Figure out which I gonna do I'll do this first I didn't realize they'd give me an option of conversation oh, I reckon these scars are enough to give anyone the cully wobbles 
I'm not gonna sit around hanging my head and twiddling my thumbs. Seen enough of that back in Twinside, but while you were busy fighting that horrible dragon, that even horriblier one, horrible. Where? Oh, no more. From now on, I'm gonna do what you lot do. Properly pull my finger out. No, mu no matter how much my knees are knocking. <laughs> Can't leave Nan and Blackthorn thinking I'm a great big wet blanket now, can I? Don't worry about me. You just stick to what you do best. Saving the world. I don't think that was a very good Goots voice, but I tried. Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. <laughs> oh, I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. Oh, I think Nan might be in trouble and she's... <laughs> It's all right. You can tell me. There was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like, said he'd heard some rotten rumors about her down Dallimill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but, but she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but well, I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? <laughs> I'm not afraid of a Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding. Lady Karen. How's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then. Both in and out of the hideaway. Clive, just say what you need. Can't complain. Wait, what exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care, but here you are today raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. Just oh, asking what? out of interest. All right. <clears throat> I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating uh, about you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are you? And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I, I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? No. You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look, I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. Yeah. I apologize. You came here with we no assumptions. You came here with questions only. No, it was. Now, I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do good in finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. Okay. Hey, yo, Goots. I still got a fucking tongue lashing from her. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded, and that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth, along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. But why would people say she was? 
What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. <laughs> all oh. the more reason. Right. But that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clyde? Shh. <sighs> I suppose it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a little hit there in a the It's a Undo something else first. Also, I do like smooth like butler. I heard the emperor was impaled on his. It was actually. We're all gonna die. Wait. You hear me? What do you reckon we should do? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all striped. I'm telling you, I can fix them. Broke it. That's what happened. And they're not even trying to hide it. Just out in the open here. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. <laughs> well... Not anymore, it's not. Oh. Uh, so long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We just dis dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. Disassembled is what you're Miss Mididol? And why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. <laughs> Miss Mididol said. Engineer. The best way I see how something works is to take it apart and put it back together again. Well then, your work is already half done. Carry on. <laughs> uh, about yeah. that. The I'll taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. So then. Then. <laughs> Give me a mini game. You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? Sid saw a teaching opportunity. This is Finally. called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! Not really. You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one Don't day? change the subject. I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. You're on the right track. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on <laughs> that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. 
Miss Minidol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. <gasps> she puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. You know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see, it's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very, very good. Let's see if that works. Yeah. Everybody's screwing in All there. Finished. Yes, Just sits on top. we did it. Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. Uh, That's right. We're Miss Middadol's hairs. Her hairs? Hairs. Yeah, hairs for the future. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Middadol and Miss Shirley. I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. All right, five. Hey, look, Wait. we never used the cogwheel. Yeah. Uh... You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? <laughs> Stand there confused, you're gonna test it out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where it would go either. But yeah, okay, so Sid is a bad liar. Not very good at improv. However, he's a great teacher. Didn't happen to forget anything, did you, Sid? Oh. Certainly not. Come on. Oh, I have equipped. Did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Ah, oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so <laughs> sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. <laughs> She'd have them follow in her footsteps. And her father's. I see. Sid, do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies have been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room, and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. 
To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war, it was a bitter pill, one she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. That's complete. I have to leave the hideaway for this one. Okay. Pull up. Hey. Hey now. Why is that the only place I'm allowed to go? You've given me these quests. You've given me quests, why am I not allowed to go to them? Will we be able to after we go here? First time I've done that. Huh. So strange. Alright, well, only place we can go, I guess. Party. Cloak and dagger key. It's like a dream. The four of us out walking like we used to. Enjoying this, are you? Gav and the others could be in danger as we speak. You're right. I'm sorry. Yote is a fine scout. If Candle was attacked, she will already have begun gathering information. Tabor isn't far. We should pick up the pace. Now we can go other places. We just had to go here first. Come on. Switch to this. But now we can actually go other places. What is this? I want to check out over here, but then we're probably just uh, to a different map. <laughs> It's over. Oh, jeez. Got this huge beam and then he it out for
Oh, we can't? Fuck. Thought we might be able to do to jump that. Oh. Wait, that's active? Huh. Okay, but yeah, apparently I get there from another route. Which means we're gonna go and do the side quests. Because I like getting those done first. Oh, there's one down this way. So it's just down the hill. Okay, so we're going all the way down that way for this quest. And I know we want to go down there after everything else. We have to reach up there. Gotcha. It's weird that it didn't let me just go here. I had to go and start the other mission first. Ghosts at the gates, not days. Mini map. Not either. You needn't fret. The creatures are. Dark skies, but we should be in there. To the meadows, then. He said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Bright blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. A lot of yellow flowers. Not the ones we There's our blue back wyvern. This must be our wyvern. All right. Let's get this over with. <laughs> Next dive going on there. All right. Rock jar. That's the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Bright yellow with a heady scent. Star. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. Well, that was that one. Next. Will be Margaret Rest. Everything else. 
here before going back to the hideaway. Then the fates seem bent on driving me from my inn. But if they want me out, they're gonna have to try harder. Oh, they they took up positions around the door. There you are. My lord, Marcus, is that you? It was Marcus. It is you. Marcus. Then you received my letter. I am Sebastian Rutherford, chief steward of your lord uncle's estate. Of course. We met once before. Yes, my lord. Thank you for coming. And what was so sensitive that you couldn't put it in writing? A thousand apologies, my lord. I did not mean to offend. I merely... It's all right. Continue. I am here at Martha's rest, at the behest of your lord uncle, tasked with learning what I am able of the realm's current state of affairs. And what I have learned is grim. The fall of the Mother Crystals has left Storm in a state of utter disarray. The subsequent darkening of the heavens has only made things worse. Akashic attacks, once unthinkable, are now commonplace. The gears of governance have ground to a halt, and without a steady hand on the tiller, the realm threatens to drift into utter chaos. Your lord, uncle, uh, however, believes there is a way to avoid this fate, and is determined to see it set in motion. That sounds like quite the undertaking. It is. Hence my having enlisted the aid of several colleagues serving the Seven High Houses. Alas. Alas. I have lost contact with two of those colleagues already. They are both able-bodied and trained in the sword, yet in these dark times even that may not prove sufficient to keep a man safe on the road. So you want me to find them? I'll need to know where they went. One I sent to investigate the Republic, the other the old Imperial capital of Oriflam. That doesn't exactly narrow it down. I suppose... I'll start in Dalamil and work my way east. Thank you, my lord. I, I shall this pray one for your success and safety. Search okay. Rutherford's colleague in Dalamil. Dalamil is where I was going to go next anyway, as you can see. Eye for an eye is there as well. Like Butler. Love it. It's not going to be easy finding one man in an entire republic. Let's hope someone here has seen something. Oh, hammer on the ground. Um, just in case. I think we're going to it's made end it. Look what they've left us. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. The gentleman of the town guard. Fuck! How the hell did they find it? No one knew where I was keeping that kill. The finest cell sword. Could be I know something more. What's it worth to you? Clive, listen! I've found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. Have you? Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. 
And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who A will they all person. turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good Reaper herself. <laughs> and you've seen this Reaper at work. Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. Here in Delamil. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. You see this Feeling sword over bold, my shoulder? Traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? No. Not unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this store he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goots. Notice, Goots has two axes. One on each of his packs. Right? Can't just through this. The finest cell swords in store. Right. Good no handle Fuck! How the hell did you... The gentlemen of the town guard are Just over here uh, with uh, time to brave the viper's nest. Here with Otto to collect sand. No one was here before. Oh, I still have Gil equipped. Just you, is it? <sighs> Thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death, or a quick one. My goodness, you Boys, really are overconfident. He's all yours, but that sword is mine. Oh, he did see our sword. I, see. I should have switched back to AP or maybe Berserk. Oh well, too late for that. Leave now, and we can pretend this didn't happen. Angie <laughs> Kerr. Gather up. Oh no, you first. Nice target, Torgal. Always take down the mages first. Healing? Hold on, someone's healing here. Where's the magic user? You! Fuck you! Stop casting! No wonder they're not going down. <laughs> yeah, because that was totally Gorilla's power. Ding! So 
saw this fancy ass sword on my back and you didn't think I knew oh, how to use it? Done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. Boots was you the target. even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. But then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! Really? To find good. Really? Right calling now. me a coward? For that? For letting you live? Have some fucking thanks! Have some fucking respect! Mr. Bogwin? Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them horrible lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood. Blood? Goose, are you all right? He, he, he's gonna kill Nan. He said she had to pay in blood. After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Oh, but you do. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her sins. No. No? I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her, or I'll, or I'll, or I'll kill you myself! Goot, no. Enough, all of you! Oh, hi! Karen. But how did you? <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking, who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogam back then, wasn't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense. But I see you're the same pants-pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs. You... You bitch! Everything that happened, it was all your fault! And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me! <laughs> oh, come on. Goose, you... If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me. Fuck! <gasps> you had an opportunity to show some, some action with non-main characters. So, and you just blank it out. Legs. You remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye. Wise words, sir. Wise words. Okay. And now it's time to collect. Well then, all right, Karen. Sorry to keep you waiting. <laughs> Is he dead? No, but I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. Oh, she literally took his eye out. I should know. 
You don't mean it. Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same route. Oh, right. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. He has a glass eye. Sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. So I took some of my own. Sorry, lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs, too. <laughs> but... What if he comes back again? What if he does? I'm working. First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. Ah! But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. Also, yeah, we're Clive. rooting for, for Karen there. Always rooting for Karen. Remind me never to cross you, Karen. <laughs> yeah, apparently that was the guy who took her eye. So she just went like, yeah, no, no. You're trying to get to me, guess what? I'm gonna fucking take your eye too. Why the hell not? Ah, uh, excellent. All right, now we got something for... The butler over here. I almost forgot that someone's got himself in trouble. Right, hold on. I need to change my equipment. I don't know if it'll count for the AP, but it looks like just a normal battle, so we'll do that. I don't see your master here, so you can start by giving us all the coppers in your purse. I already told you, I have nothing. <laughs> then maybe we'll take that pretty outfit and the steel you're wearing. Yo. Uh, please, these men are trying to rob me. I'll deal with this. Thank you. Are you that one's master then? If you kindly pay the coin he owes us, we can pretend you didn't draw your blade on Republican soldiers. Yo, or you can go I... back to your garrison and I yeah. won't report you to your captain. Oh, you're more than welcome to. He hasn't had many visitors since we slit his throat. Yep. Oh, they got out of range. Take this guy out, though. Oh, I got two. Oh. Ding! Ah, oh, finished it with a mortal blow. Hell yeah. Can't really tell if he's asleep here or not. Probably. I'd expect as much from Hugo's faithful, but these were men of the fist. Much has changed in the Republican army since they lost their rock. You've seen this kind of thing before then? Many times. I was sent here to observe the situation. You're one of Rutherford's men. He sent me to look for you. Well, I have my thanks. I fancy I could defend myself against one, perhaps two, but a whole regiment. I arrived in Dalamil several days ago, but when I called upon the captain of the local garrison to make inquiries, his men confiscated my effects and locked me in a cell. The captain is no more. And his men make the rules now. Fortunately, I was able to bribe my way free, only to be stopped again by those soldiers you so kindly dispatched. What of the Fist Central Command? Surely they wouldn't allow such lawlessness amongst their ranks. I would imagine they are unaware of it. Most of the army has fallen back to the capital and hunkered down behind her walls. Those who weren't recalled now rule the fringes unchecked, answering to no one but themselves. Then it's worse than we imagined. You should return to Rosaria. 
It's not safe here. I'll find a caravan heading north. Uh, you won't mind if I borrow one of these soldiers' coin purses? Not at all. Now, to find this second associate of Rutherford's. If he was bound for Oriflam, I'll start at Northreach and see if I can pick up his trail. You know, if I'd gone in to Martha's Rest first, I would have done this while I was up in Northreach. Oh, well, let's go and do that now. I should have started in Martha's Rest at that. Oh. There's a lot of road between here and the capital. Rutherford's man could be anywhere. Or he could be right here. Or not. Oh, or yes, there he is. What's up? What happened here? If you're with the others, they've already relieved me of my belongings. I'm not. I'm looking for someone who was sent here by a man named Rutherford. And then you found him. Mm -hmm. I'm Same Alastair outfit. Rockford, attendant to the Lady Ariane of House Wellesley. Of the seven high houses of Rosaria. It's been a long time since last I saw my great aunt. Is she well? My Lord Marquis? Uh, yes. Yes, she is. The Lady Dowager has granted me leave to assist your Uncle Stuart. I was on my way back from the old capital when I saw some villagers being robbed on the road here. Bandits. They looked more like field hands, but it didn't matter in the end. I did what I could to help the victims, but all it earned me was a pommel to the temple. Which way did they go? South, toward the gate. All right. I'll take care of them. Founder knows I've met enough of their kind. You head back to Northreach, visit the Vale, tell them I sent you. Thank you. I shall. Founder be your shield. That one take your sword back up. Ah. How is my great aunt? They just couldn't Holy resist, shit. could they? <laughs> Yo. This one's ours, pretty boy. Now I concentrate on this guy. Hey, uh, peasant guy, you might want to run. Make for the town while you can. There may be more bandits nearby. 
You don't need to tell me twice. Many thanks, traveller. This looks to be all of them. Back this way, okay. I thought I told you to make for the Vale. Yeah. And stand by as ill might befall the heir to the Ducal throne. It's just I'll Clive, die. and I'm <laughs> fine. Which is more than can be said for you. I will survive. Strange that the garrison wouldn't intervene in such a brazen attack so close to their gates. The garrison have their hands full inside the city. Some days they don't even send out patrols. There are few hands left to work the fields, and even fewer to transport the grain. The market stalls are nearly bare, and the price for what remains is exorbitant. It's not uncommon to see a fight break out over a crust of bread. When I said the ones who attacked me didn't have the look of bandits, I meant it. They were probably just desperate. Rockford, listen to me. If you are to continue your investigation, you first need to seek the attention of a healer. <laughs> I... Of course. I shall return to Northreach right away. You are but covered in blood. Allow me to thank you first. That it's yours. Had you not happened along, I... Don't thank me. Thank Rutherford. It was he who sent me. I suppose he'll be wondering where I've got to. I shall send a Bastolus as soon as I'm able. Good day. My uncle certainly has his work cut out for him. If it isn't already too late. I should go and tell Rutherford that his colleagues are still in one piece. Before we go back to the hideaway. I see you're still here. The rest's location affords a constant flow of traders, and with it, a constant flow of information. Speaking of which, I received word from both my associates. They have resumed their investigations, thanks to you. I only happen to be in the right place at the right time. They both seem to think the realm's prospects rather grim. I am afraid that grim would be putting it lightly. Storm is in crisis, and if we are to free her, we must work quickly. And we must work together. Such is your Lord Uncle's wish, as it is mine. I like that seemingly everyone in Clive's family is just a good person. Oh, breath of light. Like other than uh, other than his mother, the pr pretty much everyone related to Clive's father is just good people. Quite <laughs> refreshing. Let's go turn these in first. Mindless though they are, an Akashic horde large enough to besiege the free cities is not to be trifled with. We must proceed with caution. Yeah, yeah. We'll get there eventually, I'm sure. A lot of side quests. Let's do Karen first. Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul a gut. Uh, I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye, 
Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whit for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd uh. have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Well, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again. And you can't stop me. <laughs> Why, you big lump. <laughs> Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. <laughs> Don't you go putting yourself in trouble for me. For no, no, I That's think I maybe. will. <laughs> but if he's ever to make his own way in life, he'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dalamil. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Of course. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. I don't go thinking that'll do you any favours. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Yeah, I figured. Quest complete. Continental Sentinel. They can read. Congratulations. Seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's see if this turns Let's out looking as bad as the other one. chefs of yore knew what they were on about. And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> So, not fit for consumption, then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way yeah, the same to an almost the other one. violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force. A force of nature, <laughs> even. A maelstrom of flavor and sensation. A graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. I think he's good well, friends with the bard. I can't tell all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women? to procure a dozen blueback wyverns forthwith. I'll give it some thought. <laughs> right? Yeah, he definitely do that. All right. First. That book may be a veritable treasure trove. But the recipes are hardly what I'd call honest fair. Oh, who needs honesty when they can have majesty? <laughs> Our companions deserve only the very best. It seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. Go up here. 
Oh wait, no. First I wanna check if we got wall of memories. I guess I could save that. that got pulled into time. Oh well. An ornate brass sensor from beyond the outer seas. Gifted to Clive by Karen for his assistance in clearing her name. According to the Cantankerous Shopkeep, when packed with herbs and ambergris and left to smolder, the fragrant smoke produced, produced can ward off everything from insects to the plague, protect the home from human invasions, and heal any number of ailments, all while bringing love and fortune. Or somewhere else. The Alliance reports. Maybe the place next to me. Did you see that? How may I help you today, Clive? Since I can remember, I have served none but myself. Turn my back on the world for a handful of, of silks and a heavy purse. But where that? Where is that left? It's hard to keep keep joy in one's heart when all those around you are without it. Something must change, and that change will start here. You earned this. Oh, that amber and an orchestrion roll. Oh, those two things. All done. Fancy a look at the list, do you? Quick look. Oh. You think you can help? All right. So we'll test that orchestrion roll, then head straight away for the main mission. And that side quest will begin. Or we'll see on the map. old jukebox. Oh, we found this in a coffer. Oh, it's the battle music! I can't have this playing here, though. It seems the hideaway is lost its. I, I'm I'm not really gonna change. Um, or uh, I'm not gonna change the music in the hideaway until maybe much later because it it does change on its own. Depending on story beats. We can use the ruins to cross the ravine. Assuming they would allow it, the echoes have a will of their own. There in a moment. Oh, and there's a curl in front of it. Sure. Why not?
legal sash. It's better. Excellent. Love it when I find equipment. Better? Definitely worth the fun. me by the way. I don't think that actually kills me any more than my gray health. Still in battle. Those things shouldn't be part of the battle. We can't get down there. They shouldn't have aggroed. Will they stop aggro if we get far enough away? 
Did it, I think it glitched. Tell us about Yote, Joshua. She's strong-willed, loyal, no. and deadly with a blade. Much like Clive, but with better manners. Same guy, same traveling merchant. I do. Where are you off to now, then? I think it is. Bound for the free cities, perhaps. Oh, no need to say if you'd rather not. We all have our reasons. Ain't exactly feeling like sharing with strangers myself at the mo. Truth be told, we could do with a bit of inspiration. Don't know which way to turn no more. Was doing a roaring trade back in Oriflam. Boy, up until the poor Drake lost her noggin. So, I thought I'd try me luck in the desert. Then the fang went the same way. And don't get me started on the mess in the blooming Dominion. Suppose I could try Camber next. But knowing my luck, the old place would be crawling with the works before I'd even sight me stall. Well, as I always say, where there's crisis, there's opportunity. Opportunity to mint skill that is. This is the same so, guy. Where to next? I feel like we is might have need to be made in ash. The works even carry him. He seems to be on our way to every new city we go to. Oh, we got a side quest. <laughs> You're injured. What happened here? Where are your comrades? Ether flood up ahead. It swallowed our camp while we slept. My own men did this. Turned. Every last one of them. There's a village not far from here. Tabor. The people were kind to us. It's only a matter of time before they won't stand a chance. We can't let those monsters reach the... <laughs> Go. You catch your breath. Thank you. Our encampment is up ahead. Just off the track. They must not reach Tabor. Forgive me, Lord Kuka. Rest well, soldier. You said the encampment was close. Let's hope the Akashic yeah, is still we, there. We can see the ether flood from here. Another ether flood. They're everywhere now. We can't go around it. Then we'll just have to be careful.
Sorry, knock him away from the ice. Someone there! Please, I, I can't move my leg! That doesn't sound like an Akashic. Uh, oh! Why does not reach over here? You're with the battalion? I am. I heard the fighting. Are the others taken care of? One of your brothers in arms told me what happened and asked for help. Another survivor? Where is he? <laughs> tell me. His wounds were too deep. Oh, you said you couldn't move your leg. He was right to send you. Those things you slew are no longer my brothers. Tabor is safe thanks to you. Here, you've earned it. Oh, I should have switched to Gil before this. Have you thought of that? Oh, he doesn't even give me Gil. Never mind. But we got a level. Hell yeah, thirty-nine. You seem familiar. Have we met? You must have me confused with someone else. You're Sid. I was there in Kostnis when you killed my brothers. I was there in Rosalith when you killed my commander. My war with Hugo Kupka is over. I bear no ill will toward those who followed him. And what of my ill will? Coward! Draw your steel. Lord Kupka shall be avenged! Um, no. Fuck. Every time I look up one of these decisions, it's like, oh, your choice has no consequence. This is probably, I say no and he fights me anyway, or I just go with it. I gotta look it up. have healed and your head has cooled. Come and find me if you must. Though I hazard your life would be better spent in service of those who need it. Or have you forgotten your oath to the Republic? My oath? What would you know of oaths? I know how hard they are to keep. Which is why I'm giving you the chance to keep yours. No. <laughs> I won't be deceived. That's, that's not... Lord Kupka told no. us... Of your crimes, you are an outlaw, a murderer, not some, <laughs> some man like you or anyone else. Ooh. I am <laughs> nothing like you. No, you're a lot if weaker. You're not gonna kill me. Then go. Leave. Just know that I will find you, Sid. 
someday. Whatever. Have fun with that. Uh, see if you can find a way around the flood, because I ain't seen another way out for you. Oh, except maybe. No, no, bridge is broken. Chest on it. Yeah, good luck getting around the ether floods. Come get me. You got some hits in. Uh huh. I almost feel like I should turn the brightness up. Have you been to Tabor before? There are a few places I haven't. Welcome, travelers. We don't get many visitors here in Tabor. Where now, Joshua? There is a residence just inside the city gates. She awaits us within. Stop. Welcome, welcome. Choice. Ooh, sixteen thousand for. Oh, the amber. Hold on. Where does that show up? Yep, just valuable. course. Go safely. Quarry's been hard to find since the sky's turned. It has indeed. Can't blame the beasts for being on edge. Thank you for the deal, Ed, mister. Mummy needs a pottage from it. Sounds delicious. Perhaps you'll invite me around to try it next time. Oh, I get it. Have you noticed the Elder has Walking been coughing down. less of late? Yes. I hear Master Seal drew up a new tonic for him. People around here aren't doing too bad. Oh. A scratch on them. So it's these stones to Canva and the rest of the boxes to Dalamil.
sky go back to how it was? I don't like it. Nor do I, dearie. In all my long years. That Cyril fella's an odd fish, don't you think? Well, scholarly sorts like him always are, aren't they? The flood, yes, and not a stone's throw away. My Lord Marquess, it is an honor. I am Yote, Knight of the Undying, charged with the protection of His Grace Joshua Rosfield, Keeper of the Flame of the Phoenix. Uh, of course. It all makes sense now. Would you care to elaborate? Yes. The Undying are loyal servants to the Ducal Throne or more specifically, to its heir. They have served our family for generations, albeit from the shadows. Since their inception, they have been tasked with the preservation and enactment of the rites of ancestral communion. After the events at Phoenix Gate, it was the Undying who delivered me to safety. And since the day I left Rosaria, Yote has been my constant companion and protector. Without her sword, I would not have survived my journey across the realm. Rise, Lady Yote. You saved my brother. I owe you a debt I can never repay. I but did my duty. Come now. Tell us what you've discovered. Your Grace. Start with Tabor. An ancient settlement in central central southern Dalmechia that seems to cling to the very cliffs which dominate the landscape of the region. Its proximity to the free cities of Canver gives Tabor a ready market for high quality leather and its distant fairest produce, as well as the salt and minerals mined from beneath it. The town's long history of isolation, however, has clouded the hearts of its residents, and to this day many remain unwelcoming. help of the Undying, he obtained a copy of the Journal of Moss the Chronicler? Wait, hold on, what? Okay, we're probably about to hear this explanation in the scene. I I, I was hoping I'd covered the new stuff, mostly. Let's see. Uh, from whose pages he learned of the existence of Ultima, the creature he was later to meet with and seal away inside himself in the sanctuary of Drake's Head. Now reunited with his brother, he and Cry part as one happy Ultima and forge a new friendship. Yote, a member of the Undying, a secret society sworn to protect and serve the Rossfields of Rosaria and the Dominant of the Phoenix, who was always born in their line. After her order rescued Joshua Rossfield from the ruins of Phoenix Gate and nursed him back to health, Yote was tasked by her order to accompany and protect him on his journey to uncover the truth of Ultima. Uh, a secretive order who serve the Lords of Rosaria from the shadows. They revere the mighty Phoenix and its Dominant, and once presided over the rites of ancestral communion at Phoenix Gate. Few outside the Order know of its existence, even among the highest-ranking members of the Rosarian nobility. And to this very day, with Rosaria reduced to a mere imperial province, they continue to serve the rightful Keeper of the Flame, His Grace Joshua Ross. It is as you feared. The vessel we spied off the coast of the Crystalline Dominion on the night of her fall. It was the Einherjar. Beyond any doubt. 
It's the Black Galleon. Joshua, the Einherjar is the Royalist flagship. What business would they have in the Dominion? Uh, upon learning of Walud's involvement in recent events at Drake's Fang, I sensed the malign influence of Ultima, and bid Yote and the Undying look into the matter. We have reason to believe that the Black Galleon weighed anchor shortly after the fighting began, and set a course due south. For Canva. Then it is Waluda knights who besiege the cities. What is left of them? Yes. And the Black Galleon sails at but one man's behest. Barnabas Tharm. Did she pronounce it last time? Meanwhile, in the Agora. But are we truly safe here in the Agora? The city guard have been paid, if that's what you're implying. All the more reason for them to run. Well, you are free to leave, Lord Minister. Markets abandoned, warehouses aflame. Blackened house choking every port in the capital. Canva is ruined. The realm teeters on the brink of chaos, and all you can think about is commerce. Forgive us. We were not aware Dalmechia now subsisted on charity. How dare you? Well, distinguished shit. members of the council. You must forgive His Majesty this intrusion. What did you... What is the meaning of this? A trifle crowded, but I fear it will have to serve, my liege. Very well. The King of Wulu just walks my in colleagues. here unarmed. Do you not see? The King... He has come to save us from the Akashic. He is a gift from the heavens, divine intervention, our very salvation. You are already and of mad? course, if it is compensation he requires, we would be most willing to negotiate a fair price for services rendered. Fools. Your ignorance unbecomes you. Your Majesty, correct me if I'm wrong, but I would swear that the fiends washing the cobbles of Canva with the blood of her citizens wear the colors of Walud. <laughs> So you do not deny it. Guards, fetter them, and see our guests to the dungeons! Enough. You just cut through everyone in the room? Creatures. Odin's sword? That you should imagine yourselves worthy of salvation. Yeah. One swipe, everyone in the room. The girl is still Arm. here, somewhere in the city. Her consciousness fair dripping with her late father's hubris. A consciousness to which Mythos is inextricably bound and inexorably drawn. They are actually targeting so men. Made welcome. Yes, Your Majesty. Come, Mythos. Surely the Prince's light cannot have sated you. Yeah, something tells me he's going to make sure we drink some of his power. I've had a bad feeling about this whole thing from the beginning. Well, so maybe then. not the beginning, beginning. 
How long has Walud been under Ultima's control? How long indeed? Based on what we know of Barnabas' actions, I would guess some few years, mayhap more. So I just want to pause this here to point out being that we've seen this mural twice now, though we haven't really gotten to examine it, um, I'm pretty sure once we finally get a good look at the thing, it's going to show us something of Ifrit being the dominant of dominance, the, the icon of icons, the, the one who, uh, attributing to our, to the fact that we keep taking part of each icon that we come in contact that somehow, doing so and getting a part of all of them will lead right into Ultima's plans. And make him, make us his vessel complete, that sort of thing. But to what end? Only slightly. What does Ultima want? The what a fun tree. one. Show them. Tapestry. Wait. Is this the mural I was just talking about? <laughs> Yes, it is! Once again, the bottoms burn, the though. Flames. Phoenix Gate, Drake's Breath, and now here. But what is it? It is old, ancient, even. Nought's remains of the faith it represents, save what can be gleaned from the image itself. None could tell me what the one in the apodotry meant. Even the undying. But I believe it may be the key to discerning Ultima's purpose. That figure in the center, the one beneath whom the icons congregate, that I believe to be Ultima. He is a really? god, or at least godlike. His very existence beyond our ken. The icons, and by extension their dominance, are meant to be his subjects. And while some, like Barnabas, have accepted this role, others have rejected it. Like you, Clive, which is rather inconvenient as it appears he needs you most of all. And gods don't like to be disobeyed. No, I don't suppose they do. <laughs> Clive, may I tell Yote of the lake? Uh, by all means. Yote, I will be accompanying my brother to the free cities. <laughs> Whilst we are afield, I would have you watch over those Clive has made his wards. Omia lost Delan to his sag Ilith. Though well concealed, the hideaway lacks trained fighters to defend its occupants should they be discovered. But it is my duty to... As it has ever been my brother's duty, remember. If... if that is your wish, your grace. But please be safe. If aught were to befall you, I... You have my word. I think there might be something a bit more than duty there. Farewell, my lord, my lady. We are in your debt, Yote. I'm sending her back to the hideaway. In order to help train the curse breakers, I guess? Let's find our friends. Mural I was talking about, though, in tapestry form. The bottom of all three we've found so far have been destroyed. It doesn't bode well. It's plain she cares for you very deeply. And I her, which is why I had to let her go. Some 
Opportunity beckons. Who among you is bold enough to heed her call? Is that blade for hire, perchance? Because I have a mind to make a killing. Figuratively, I hope. Well, yes and no. A passing caravan carried with it a rumor most fortuitous for one in my trade, that an elder Dread Evis had been sighted in the fields of Carava. Dread Evis are aggressive beasts. Compelled as they are to acts of violence, few survive to maturity, but those that do, develop a hide of phenomenal value. A hide you want to sell? Eventually, yes. Though I would have it tanned first that it might be crafted into marvels the likes of which the world has never seen. Dread Evis skin is a rare thing indeed. But the worked hide of a well-aged beast? Now, that would fetch such coin that Gilbot himself might weep with envy. Bring me that beast's skin, and I will share with you the bounty of our combined labors. All right. I'll hunt your Evis. Of course you will. When one lives in such troubled times, it is a fool who lets opportunity slip his grasp. Leave Tabor through the East Gate, but take the path that branches west. Once you reach the checkpoint at Tovany, you are a mere stone's throw from the fields of Carava. I eagerly await your safe, and above all, triumphant return. Definitely a good way to finish. Careful how you pack that leather. Any creases or scratches will bring down the price. You there, the strapping lad with the sword. Finally, no one was paying me the slightest heed. Is something wrong? At the university, the students would hang on my every word. Sadly, this far from home, I'm just a vagrant greybeard. University? You're a scholar. A specialist in ancient cultures, the most accomplished in all Valisthea, some have said. Not that I look the part in these tattered rags. In my heyday, no obstacle could have kept me from my studies. Yet here I am, a wizened windbag, bested by the many steps of Tabor. The answers I seek lying just beyond my enfeebled reach. Would you do an old man a kindness and brave the stairs in my stead? You'll be amply rewarded, of course. I think it all thick, old man, but we'll do it. Climb the stairs and... And memorize a few inscriptions for me. Uh, assuming you know your letters, that is. Some courteous soul is rumored to have carved clues to Tabor's rich history into stones dotted about the village. The three of them, to be precise, one each to the north, south, and east. I'm here in the hope that those carvings might shed light on a riddle I've been pondering for some time. Namely, the otherwise undocumented origins of Tabor's unique people. Uh, people quite unlike those of neighboring lands. I can't promise I'll remember everything perfectly. Remember what you can. I'll piece together the rest. Make for the domed pavilions, and you'll have no trouble finding the stones. Hi. Have my gill on. Dose. There we go. But yeah, uh, this seems like it's just contained within here. So yeah, we'll do this before we end. How are those new boots treating you? Top of the ladder.
Guardians of the Crystal, the first stones of Teva. Sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. No history would be complete without mention of the mother crystals. So it's these stones to Canva and the rest of the boxes to Dalaman. A scratch on them. Have you noticed the elder has been coughing less? Wanderers of the Golden Plains, lay your roots in stone. With pride, recall thy noble past and make these rocks a home. What Golden Plains might the wanderers have called home, I wonder? Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, greet her promised blessing and give praise her gracious name. Farmers must have settled here in Tabor. I should speak to the old scholar before I forget everything I've read. The engravings were in good repair considering their age. Oh, what that I could have seen for myself. Oh, come, don't tease me now. What did you learn of this place and its people? Uh, let's start with the engraving to the south, shall we? Uh, what did it say? Guardians of the Crystal, the first stones of Tabor, sacred hold thy noble blood till ends the mother's labor. I'm pretty sure that was it. Fascinating. It would seem the founders of this city were descendants of those fallen charged with protecting the Mother Crystals. But oh, whatever could have driven the Guardians so far from their sacred charges, I wonder? Uh, the engraving to the north is next, I think. Wanderers of the Golden Plains, lay your roots in stone. Pride recall thy noble past, and make these rocks a home. Or, I think that was it, at least. No doubt you're right. There are vestiges of nomadic customs in Tabor its guardian roots could never account for. This is proving most enlightening. Now, for the final stone. Children of the hunters, now tillers of the land, reap her promised blessing and give praise her gracious hand. That's all three. And so, we add primitive farmers to Tabor's founding peoples, the final piece of the puzzle. Three engravings, one for each of the three peoples to have settled Tabor in ancient times. Guardians of the Mother Crystal, wanderers from across the plains, and last but certainly not least, hunters turned farmers. Little wonder it was so difficult to trace the roots of Tabor's culture. Those roots reached down through three distinct traditions. Nonetheless, one cannot help but wonder why this fact is not better known among scholars given that the stones stand here for all to see. Too many stairs, perhaps. Ha! <laughs> Too many by far. Here, yeah, and thank you. All right. All right. How are those new boots treating you?
Yeah. I wanted to get the obelisk in there because it's given off all that ether. I hate when I do this. I go go all out trying to figure out a good photo and then realize no, I don't actually want it. That Cyril fellas are not fish, don't you think? Do we're gonna go down and save right the exit. An ether flood, yes. What brings you to our humble village, young man? If it's our artisans you're here to see, then please. But do try not to interrupt their work. Walk in here. I feel like I fleshed a hundred skins today. Alright. We'll end it here. Oh wait, shit, what? I didn't expect that. <laughs> Jumpy, aren't you, Clive? Cyril. How fares the search? Cyril. Well, your grace, my report shall be with you ere long. Ah, yes. Yote is otherwise engaged at my behest. And the duty of wardenship? Fulfilled. For as you see, I've been reunited with my first shield. I am Cyril, knight of the undying and bearer of the burning quill. Charged with chronicling the mortal deeds of his grace, Joshua Rosfield. Keeper of the flame of the phoenix and rightful archduke of Rosaria. I entrusted Cyril here with overseeing the investigation into Ultima's origins. Findings from his brothers and sisters afield are delivered here to be collated and catalogued. Just how many undying are there? Not nearly enough, milady. Yet we are glad to give our all in service to the Phoenix. Such is and has ever been our creed. I see. <laughs> you have your associates, I have mine. But you may now think of them as ours. That won't be a problem, will it? The Phoenix is our sun, and we but the shadows that quicken in his radiance. It is from the darkness that we serve, both him and now you. Pray accept this token. Oh, another seal. Phoenix down! <laughs> For as long as you bear it, members of our order will reveal themselves unto you. If there is nothing further. No. You are dismissed. Your grace. They had to bring the Phoenix the down in at one point. It well, is a I'll Final Fantasy that. game, after all. Yeah, I didn't expect that, but that's cool. Cyril seemed very, um... You certainly keep strange bedfellows, Joshua. Okay. So just, uh, yeah, so next time we're going to go out here and go this way since that's open now so we can get to you before heading to the castle or whatever's in that direction. In which case, I may as well switch this back. I feel like at one point I'm not going to want this uh, experience boost on anymore, but it is very useful, and I feel like if I take it off, we'll just not nearly be uh, leveling up as much. Hey, I have a thousand! Ooh, ooh, what should I master? What should I master? Because whatever I master, I'll be able to use. Not that I really will be 
using them. Uh, yeah. So thunderstorm instead of pile drive. AOE is very useful. Alright. Use online. We'll be raiding into Vexoria the Sun Eater today. Um, just chatting, it seems, at the moment. Uh, answering questions of some degree. Also, she's in her beach outfit, which is excellent. Well, until next time, this is the Pirate King, signing off. Have a good night.